We've covered the MSX computer line quite a lot on this channel, but as we've made it very clear, it's a very big market with lots of interesting machines. And today's no exception. We look at a machine that is similar to other ones, but also very unique in itself. And here it is, the Panasonic PFS A1 FM. <laughs> Just rolls off the tongue. Uh, the M stands for modem. Uh, you probably guess with the giant communications banner there. And we've got here a couple of board rate numbers that will light up depending on the board rate of the modem. Um, yeah, <laughs> it looks lovely. These This era of Panasonic computers were, were genuinely nice. Um, it looks, if you watch the channel or follow me for, for a period of time, you'll have seen machines that look like this already. Um, specifically the A1F, which is basically this. Uh, it's got the floppy drive, it just doesn't have the modem built in. And these keys are a little bit more colorful. Uh, but also, uh, I've only got this one, which is currently broken, but this is the uh, the standard FSA1, so no floppy drive and obviously no modem. Uh, but you can see that styling is there and yeah, it's kind of lovely. Uh, right, yeah, so obviously the big thing about this is the built-in modem. It's got the floppy drive on the front as well. Um, and yeah, that's largely it. <laughs> uh, that's largely it for what it's got in included. But it's kind of, um, it's important for a couple of reasons, this machine, other than the modem. Uh, it comes with 64K as standard, which was more or less standard for MSX2s but it's very, very easy to upgrade to 128K. Literally, you just add a couple of components and change one um, jumper. It's possible but difficult to upgrade to 512 internally as well, so it's, it's a quite an upgradable machine. Um, and I think the most important thing about this in terms of MSX history is this is one of the first machines that had the Toshiba T9769, which is the MSX engine chip. Um, and that's the kind of the all-in-one glue chip, which put all the Z80 and lots of glue logic and stuff into one chip and was kind of a, want to build an MSX machine? Here you go, stick this chip on a few bit of other components and you've got an MSX machine. And yeah, before that was used in the MSX2 uh, Plus and MSX Turbo uh, machines, this is one of the first machines to use that. Yeah, it came out in 1988, Japan only, obviously. It, uh, yeah, as I said, came with 64K of RAM, 128K of VRAM, fairly standard. And yeah, obviously two cartridge slots, one at the front there, and if I can just reach past the camera. <laughs> One on the back here. I mean, these are all standards. So we've got our printer port, we've got our cassette port here. Obviously this will start disappearing on later models of the MSX. RGB, pretty standard. Here we've got the things that aren't standard, which are our modem and pass-through port. So you can uh, connect to a phone line and connect the phone line on through. This is a uh, composite. That's a channel select. This little switch here is uh, it's got one of the built-in um, BIOS menus that these machines started to have where you had all the functions on the, on the little start. Especially important for this, obviously, because of the modem. It's got dialing capabilities and stuff built in. This let you turn it off straight away. So if it was off, it would go straight to uh, MSX Basic or a cartridge if the cartridge is plugged in. Really useful. Uh, yeah, aerial socket and yeah, um, wired in power lead, which is good because... Oh, Sorry, <laughs> sorry headphone users, uh, which is good because uh, the previous machines like this one had this weird Neo Geo CD style connector, uh, which we have made a 3D replacement for, by the way, which is available free, obviously, as all of our stuff is. Right, now, at this point, I would be showing you this machine running software. That's not gonna happen mostly uh this has a fault which i've yet to track down and i'm sorry won't be fixing it in this video because um i think i know what the fault is and it's yeah not easy to repair if it is uh whilst the machine powers up fine the uh cartridge slots and the keyboard do not function i believe it's the same issue on both uh, i think it's something to do with the reset circuitry the reason I say that is because if you kind of hold reset down for a little while, you can get a cartridge to half start working. So I think there's something in there that's going wrong. And I suspect it's a Z80 problem. 
Now the problem with this is, as I've just mentioned, <laughs> this comes with that all-in-one MSX engine chip, which has a Z80 built in. I've got to try it. It may just be something as simple as a capacitor. I've, I've, I've recapped the power supply just in case that was it. Uh, I haven't recapped the main board, but there aren't that many caps. They're all pretty low values and none of them are doing anything particularly heavy. So I don't think there'll be a problem anyway, but I might end up trying that, who knows. Um, but yeah, the keyboard functions in a sense in that this pause button definitely works. It will pause stuff on the screen, but um, you can't type. So I, I think it, it's the machine for some, something's happening and it's not, something's not being activated, I think is the problem. I need to do more investigation and it's gonna be tough, tough <laughs> investigation. All right, but the one thing we can show you is we can show you the um, actual BIOS menu. May as well, we can actually run that. So let me set that up and uh, then we'll see it on the screen. Okay, yeah, we're recording from the screen because my capture device is doing weird stuff and it's just too much pain. So the first of all, we'll just turn it on now. And I think the switch is set to go straight to MS-DOS now. So there's a power switch on the side. You heard the floppy disk there probably. And there we go. So yeah, it's just like every other MSX machine because of course it does, because it is. So now if we switch that off and we flip that switch on the back to the other setting, and turn it on. There we go. And now also, as, as well as that, because the uh, mode has been activated, you can see there on the status screen, it's got the 300 board setting turned on because that's what the modem was currently set at. That's the default. But yeah, from here, <laughs> there's not a great deal we can do. I can try hitting eight, any amount of eights that I want to try hitting, and none of them will work because the uh, keyboard is not working. But if I hit the pause button, you see that animation in the middle, that stops. And push it again, it starts. So the keyboard matrix is at least partially working. It's just it's not recognizing the keys. So yeah, uh, that's our current problem which I will have to work out. Right, so if I switch this off again, and I am going to plug in my handy dandy uh, MUFDC card, cart, into the cartridge slot. Now this is basically a GoTek on a in a cartridge. So if I turn this on, it does power on the actual uh, cartridge. So we see the little GoTek style LCD panel has turned on and it just start to read it but then it will do nothing else there we go that goes straight to that anyway i'll turn that off and i will swap to the carnivore 2 because this is a more obvious way of seeing this so the carnivore 2 again if you don't know it's an sd solution for well in this case a compact flash solution uh, solid state for the msx so it allows us to load stuff up from the um, memory card now what this should be doing is loading up the carnivore menu and it doesn't <laughs> so if i now hold down the reset button for a few seconds there you go so now that's trying to start to initialize the uh, the actual cartridge, um, which it didn't do before. So that's what makes me think that there is it's, there's some kind of condition that's happening where things aren't being put into the right state. Uh, but anyway, I need to track it down still. <laughs> it doesn't knowing what the potential problem is doesn't help with the tracking down. So anyway, <laughs> there it is. Uh, it's a lovely machine. I will get it working. Um, it's going to take some digging around though to get it to work it out. If it's the MSX engine, that's a pain. You can get them. And obviously there might be broken machines that I can get the bits out of, like really broken ones. Uh, I'm hoping it's not that. I'm hoping it's something weird and innocuous, like a blown diode or a, a capacitor or something. But I'm going to have to dig to find out. But yes, it's a lovely machine. It's 
interesting um very easy to upgrade which is always good uh, and yeah just looks apart i think i probably didn't mention the joystick ports i kind of hardly ever mention the joystick ports on these things and you can probably see possibly because uh it's a bit dark <laughs> but uh um the big old red reset button there and the two joystick ports mss computers mostly always had two joystick ports so it's kind of nice anyway there we go Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please hit like. If you really like the video, please hit subscribe. If you didn't like the video or you have something else to say, then please leave it in the comments below. Whatever you want to leave in the comments, obviously. It's, um, you know, be kind. But if you do put something in the comments, YouTube realizes I've made a video because they don't seem to realize that just by me uploading it. Who knows? Oh, we hit 4K subscribers as I write this. Uh, thanks to everyone that joined. It's um, really nice. It's a nice little milestone. I think that's probably the... Um, <laughs> Uh, that's, that's probably the uh, the peak for this channel, I suspect, given how long this channel's been running and we've only just got there, but it's nice to hit it. Anyhow, see you next time. The present is horrible, the future looks bleak. Remember our childhood to get us through the week. We're getting re-end.